All right, so yesterday we created a uh, custom from scratch chord progression using the Neo-Romanian system here. Today, let's try something different because there's so many different ways and routes you can take with creating music in uh, Scalar. So if we go to the Songs tab here, we have a bunch of pre-made themes and ideas. And if we go to Cinematic here, um, Right off the bat, we can go to something like Suspense, and you can hear the tension and suspense in those chords. And uh, same thing if we try something else, uh, if we go to uh, something epic. So you can immediately have a starting point uh, to work with something here. So say we like this epic. And we want to work with it, but we want to totally customize it. So uh, maybe even immediately we don't like uh, the scale it's in. We want it to be in, say, G minor. All right, so we're going to stay focused and keep moving. So let's say we like that. We can then drag out that idea for the amount that we want of chords and move it into the edit place here. And um, right from there, we can uh, right click on it and say, OK, edit chord. And um, then we, and I've talked about this before, but this is the section where you can not only edit the inversions and octaves, but you can edit every note of every chord and every velocity of every note of every chord. So in depth editing now. And uh, so we can listen to the chord. Our starting chord so we can begin to see what we might want to change maybe the D minor all right so the first chord is sounding good to me as a bright and cheery first chord with a bass note so let's go to the next one we hit the tab and we see this has kind of a bass note here, but let's listen to it. We added another bass note, but we didn't like it. And we can move the keyboard over. So if you're running out of space, you can just hit this button here and move it over. Um, so let's just listen to it again. That's sounding okay. All right. All right, so let's now say that we want to have some bass notes. So let's, we've got some bass notes in all these three up here and this one. Now the D. The D minor we may want to change. So let's go and edit. Hit the tab. Make sure you're editing the right one. You have to activate it down here first. So the D minor, um, you know, we can make changes to that. And uh, so now it's a D minor 7. So we can um, go back, make a change, go back to where it was using these keys. And you'll often need them because you'll be trying out ideas and want to go back to where you were. So we're back at D minor. And let's take a look here and we change that. So now it's a B flat major. Don't like that. Back to where it was. Adding that higher note seems to let's play it through. All right. 
we move over to the C minor and uh, maybe we want to make a change to that, maybe not. Move this over a little bit, keyboard. Can't go any further. Nothing over there. Let's play it through. All right, that is actually sounding okay to me. So we've made some changes. And again, we could have went into velocity and changed any one of these notes to really fine tune it. But uh, let's stay focused and keep moving. So we've made some musical decisions. And uh, let's continue with those decisions and with the tempo. So beats per minute, I'm going to say uh, 110 for today. That's what this theme is going to go with. And uh, we're going to go with 4-4 four, four time. And so the grid is set up four beats per measure, 4-4 four, four time signature. And in the next segment, we'll move on to getting these, uh, this progression into the DAW. So we got our chords. Let's drag them out and into the DAW. Now, when I drag them out into the DAW, I want to make sure they're going to come in at at least maybe four beats to give me nice long uh, chords. So right now we have no performance turned on, so they're going to come in just as long uh, kind of sustained chords. So we'll drag them into a sustained track and we can make our loop longer and uh, we can turn on our sustains and uh, we can see what we've got loaded up. It's the orchestra sustains full patch and we can play it in the DAW. So let's look at what we have here. We have a lot of notes. We have some low bass notes that are good. We were looking for that. And uh, so we can even create uh, some more bass notes. In fact, uh, for this chord here, we might just, uh, we're going to add a bass note for that. But let's go back to the beginning. And to help us do that, let's quickly drop in our chord track. And uh, we're in G minor, so let's go G minor. And immediately we see, because our chord uh, helper track is in uh, helping us with colors, keep us to edit uh, without going astray too much. So that's good. And um, we have a bunch of empty tracks here for performance ideas that we're going to drop in shortly. And right now we have bass notes for pretty much all the chords that we could use for bass notes, except this one over here. And I'm going to drag out and just uh, copy this note over and uh, bring it down to a possible bass note for us. So we have our sustains. All right. So we can quickly now grab these notes, and uh, so we have a bass note for every one, and um, we can go and we can uh, control copy that and go to our bass uh, track, turn it on, and control V, and I don't know why it did that, did I lose my selection? But uh, regardless, we can just delete all these other tracks, uh, all the notes quickly. And boom, those are gone. Those are gone. That's gone. And we have some bass notes. All right. So now let's listen to both the sustains and the bass. And the bass is uh, just a sec here. Looks like my mouse sometimes 
loses its connection. Let's see if that works. All right, so our base is, let's see here, here it is, the orchestra. And we can turn on some brass and a contra bassoon if we have to. But let's listen to that. All right, so let's turn up the bass a little bit. In fact, these notes uh, are pretty low for the bass. Uh, we may want to bring these up a little bit. One octave up. And that's great for the beginnings of our new musical idea here. Uh, we're going to bring in our loop a little bit and we're going to trim these two to bring that in like that. All right, so let's move on to bringing in some performances. So we've got our little musical idea here and if we look at uh, the sustain and play it, the thing you may want to just check and double check, uh, look over if your um, your voice leading is the way you want it for going from one chord to the next. And once that is the way you like it, uh, then really you can just move to the step where you turn on the performances, which will all adhere or conform to uh, as long as we demo them with this button down here to play our edited chord progression. Um, we can come up with all kinds of uh, uh, musical ideas that might fit our um, what we're creating here. So let's listen to one. Uh, that's an interesting thing that might add to our song. So if we drag it out into one of our empty MIDI tracks, it's something we may want to utilize. So let's drag it out. In fact, let's drag it right up to our shorts. And uh, we can trim it up here. And because it's kind of a, an ARP type sound uh, MIDI, I've turned on full pizzicato. And uh, let's just listen to that uh, with... And we can turn on the bass. Now, this is an element that we may want to use in our song. It's uh, some nice movement that uh, would be useful with a uh, pizzicato or any kind of short articulations. If uh, we switch it to uh, a marcato or a staccato, we'll get a different effect. Mercado. Probably more useful, I'm thinking the pizzicato sounds nice. All right, so that's just the first element of uh, really hundreds of ideas that will conform to our musical uh, little song that we're trying to create here. So I've got a bunch of tracks that are left open. And um, of course, you don't have to use the entire track. You could say, oh, I just like this, these uh, high notes that uh, then you could drag into a staccato track or whatever. But the great thing is, is that it conforms to what we're building musically. So I'm going to drag that down to the bottom. And you could rename this to maybe uh, Pitts Idea 1. And you could have 30 empty tracks here with all kinds of ideas, but you're building, uh, you're using these building blocks that conform to our song idea, right? So now let's switch to a uh, strum. And uh, strums are very interesting because uh, if you set it to a slower strum, you have options here, uh, it will give you a strum, which may be another pizzicato effect or a harp effect. So let's also drag that in. 
So we drag that in, and you can trim it now or do it later. But uh, if we look at the MIDI of a strum, we see that, yeah, the notes come in where they're come in at different points in time, like a guitar strumming each string. And that might sound good uh, with, let's turn these off with the pizzicato. And it does. It's an element we may want to use for a bridge or a chorus or some part of our song. Let's uh, turn on the sustains. So that's another element that we may want to use to build our song. And that's completely different MIDI data. So let's go back to the beginning. And you can see um, you know, how many interesting building blocks that uh, we can pull out of here. So, um, and the uh, ARPs can, uh, they can be different speeds and types. So you're not limited with just eighths. I try to just kind of default at an eighth that you could uh, do 16th uh, triplets or whatever. So let's go and try something like a performance where uh, even the first one here, let's just see how it'll sound. Sounds interesting. We could try another one. And we can switch it from pizzicato to uh, full staccato just to see, you know, and try another one here. We can change the voice grouping. So it's really up to you where you want to go and what elements you want to use or build your own. And, um, you know, you could uh, go right in here and, and pick bases and melodies and drag in all kinds of ideas. And um, let's just drag in this, this one. And instead of spending all day, let's just try to find something expressive. This sounds interesting. Now you can also bring it in at different beats, right? It will play, uh, stay on a chord for different amounts of time. If you want it to fully play out on every chord, you would change it to like eight beats. But let's stick with four. But you can also change that to give you uh, a different uh, look at this one performance. Let's drag it in. And uh, let's drag it in on the staccato track. And might as well trim it up and uh, just give it a listen. And we'll turn off the bass and the sustains. So now we have a really nice kind of upper register uh, movement and rhythms going on here. And um, from there, you can alter it and assign any, you know, type of, it doesn't, you know, we could go back to the pizzicatos. So it doesn't take a genius to figure out that um, if you were to just spend a little bit of time creating your song, you could um, have certain performances for each chorus. You could change it up slightly and uh, make a, uh, uh, the choruses and the verses and the bridges all different. You know, it's really, uh, oh, you're, you're not limited at all. If you, if you turn on your human eyes, you can also bring in a human effect and you're down here, you'll get more of a dramatic effect on your uh, velocity sliders. And especially with strings, um, you know, you want to get those plucks and those strings, you know, even more pronounced to give you more interesting and dynamic um, 
uh, range on your velocities. So let's switch this back over to uh, staccatos for now. And you know, you could end up with 30 tracks of uh, building blocks all adhering to your song idea, the chords and uh, the tempo and everything. So from the hundreds of different ideas, and I'm not going to get into all of these things here, but you can just imagine if you spent the day creating one idea, you could have maybe, you know, 10, 20 tracks of ideas and you could take bits and pieces of any one of them and cut and paste into a track that may be appropriate for the marcato to play with more of an attack or you may you know bring in other types of midi as a strum that maybe will play well with pizzicatos or harps something plucked and uh, also with uh, bass lines you could uh, bring in some uh, bass ideas um, that they have performances right for basses and melodies and rhythms and so the point of this video is uh, mainly that uh, showing you a slightly different way of coming up with your um, your chord progression from a already pre-made theme or idea and that you can completely customize that theme idea to make it your own and then you can uh, bring in all the ideas and performances that will adhere to your uh, uh, progression if, as long as you drag it in from down here, make sure you have your progression uh, selected. So that's today's little video on idea of how to work with scalar number two. And I hope to come up with even more interesting ways of how this deep program can be used to come up with ideas. Have a great day or evening wherever you're at in the world, and we'll see you on the next video.